Uh, welcome everybody. Um, my name is Otto Moerbeek. I'm going to talk uh, about uh, my, my or OpenBSD's implementation of Malloc, especially from a developer point uh, of view. So who am I? I am, my name is Otto. I uh, been an OpenBSD developer for more than 20 years now. And as a day job, I work for a company called PowerDNS. And I work on DNS software. Uh, Apparently, yeah. Um, from for OpenBSD, I worked on many things, mostly in uh, user land, uh, libc stuff, uh, but also things like patch, uh, BC, DC, um, all around uh, user land, and uh, well, some kernel stuff maybe in on the file system uh, area. And well, I f would say one of my major contributions during the years has been. Uh, my malloc implementation which is incorporated by this commit i'm showing here in 2008 which is about 15 years ago um, before that uh, openbsd uses uses the same uh, uh, malloc implementation as freebsd did phk uh, malloc uh, in the meantime uh, freebsd also switched the malloc implementation well uh, um, but let's talk a bit about what malloc the API actually is. It's quite a simple AP API actually, and that has big consequences on your degrees of freedom for implementing it. Um, so I assume that uh, you all know a bit about C pro programming. And if you want to store something in memory, you have basically have two uh, ways to do that. One is on the stack, things that uh, are transient and will disappear when your fu the function uh, ends. And one is more long-term and the basic APIs to do that from user land are, is malloc. There are other ways, unique specific ways like mmap and things like that. But we're talking about the POSIX API for uh, malloc here. Two calls, malloc and free. Um, basically saying I want a piece of memory and I do not longer need it anymore. Um, there are a few related functions in the API definitions. Uh, they can be expressed in terms of malloc and free themselves. Of course, any implementation which is uh, doing serious work will have specialized implementation for both for the other AP, uh, uh, API calls like realloc and calloc because when you know a bit about the actual implementation of malloc, you can make much faster versions of them than compared to expressing them in the basic malloc and free ways. There are a few extra rules with the API, like things, uh, the memory returned, but uh, how is it aligned? But the most important thing is is that since the API is very simple in definition, there's a lot of freedom on how to implement it. Well, one of the things you have to consider is that malloc needs to store some information somewhere to be able to do its job. You can imagine very simple implementation of malloc given a way of getting memory from the kernel, for example, mmap, that implementation conforms to the API, but will probably perform very badly. That is, if you get a malloc call, you call, you say, well, I'm rounding up to the page, page size, uh, size, first page size, size, call mmap for that size, return what I'm getting from the kernel, do some little error handling there, and uh, the free call, I'm just not implementing. That's an empty body. That's actually a conforming uh, implementation of malloc. Of course, it will perform quite badly because it will do an allocation on each call. It will also greatly overuse memory, both since you are not freeing at all, and also because you are alloc actually allocating at least a page for each allocation. But it works, you can do it. It's nice to play around with those uh, type of implementation. 
But for real work, for production work, for a serious thing, of course, there are a lot of other things to decide. Um, originally, the old Unix system had a single way of getting memory from the, the kernel for an application, for a process, and we were just basically saying, well, at the bottom of the rest space you have your code, at the top end you have your stack, and anything in the middle is either data for the application or an accessible, not mapped memory. With S the S break system call, you could extend the size of the data ac accessible for the application. So that means that there's a continuous part of the memory, virtual memory, which can grow in one direction. It could also shrink, but not a lot of implementations do that actually. But since quite some time, there's also another way of uh, getting memory from the kernel, and that is called MMAP, which gets you uh, at least page-sized uh, memory, pieces of memory from the kernel. Um, so that is one way of, uh, how do you do that? Uh, how do you get memory from the kernel? Because the Malacal has to get some uh, its memories uh, from somewhere. Uh, that's one design decision. And related to that is also, where do I store your metadata? If you want to be able to implement free, you have to know if just given a pointer which was previously returned by malloc, what size the allocation is to be able to do the correct administrative work to free that memory, to mark it unused, and maybe even return it to the kernel as saying this memory I do not want to, uh, I do not know him need for the application. That metadata richly was mostly stored pretty close, or if maybe even <laughs> at uh, um, as part of the app ac uh, allocation itself. So if you would ask in a, a piece of memory, malloc would store in front of that uh, return pointer, just before a little lower address, things like a link to another piece of uh, malloc memory, maybe a size a few bits to uh, give some status, but um, that is one way of uh, doing it. Uh, we'll see that my malloc, or OpenBeast malloc, uh, takes another approach where the metadata needed to do the administrative work is not stored any close to the allocated data given to the application. Uh, like I said, there's also the uh, um, decision what you do with uh, freed memory. If you have a page which is totally unused, you could return it to the kernel, so to speak, because you don't need it anymore. The kernel is then free to uh, do other things with it. Um, you could also say, well, I'm saving it for later. Maybe the application will need that page sometime later on. And uh, you could also say, well, um, I'll keep, I'll, I'll uh, let's say maintain it for a while, but in some caching manner, but when I see that the memory requirements from the applications are not as high anymore, I'll only then return it to the kernel. So some policies uh, are uh, there important. So, on OpenBSD, MMAP is a bit different than many other applications, so that has consequences as well for the malloc. Um, one of the design choices I made was is that any uh, memory that is used uh, by malloc or needed by malloc to get to an application originally comes from a ma MMAP call. That MMAP call is randomized in OpenBSD. That means that any call will, uh, where you say, do not say I want a specific address, but just uh, give me some memory, some pages of memory, will return a randomized address within the address space of the application. Uh, that has consequences, because in general, it's a bit harder to keep track of memory when it is not 
contiguous in, in space, it is scattered around the address space. That will introduce some overhead here and there, not only on the application side, but also on the current side. Uh, but we do really think that is a worthwhile approach. Why is that? If you have a memory page which is ra random in a, at a random spot in the virtual memory, it is surrounded by unmarked memory most of the time. So that means that any out of bound access to that page will be a segmentation violation without any extra cost to the application. Of course, there is some o page management overhead on the kernel side because a fragmented memory map introduces more overhead than contiguous. At least we are willing and say that's a good thing, but in, because in the end it will help us finding bugs. We'll see that uh, uh, thing of randomizing allocations much more in different areas. Of course, uh, si since you're requesting a page at a time from the kernel, there's a minimum size, which is typically 4K. Uh, there are other architectures sort of less used, which like Sp Spark 64 or uh, some MIPS implementations that use uh, larger page uh, sizes. Um, but the main point to remember is that the ASLR in OpenV is not only uh, looking at where you store uh, things like libraries and executables in memory, in the stack as well, but also extend it to the heap display. Each run of a program will use a mem different memory layout. Um, if you Talking about smaller applications, what malloc does is it, it, it asks a page from the kernel, divides it up into smaller pieces, um, and uh, maintains a bitmap to see which uh, of those pieces called chunks are free uh, and which are can be given to the application or which are marked uh, in use and uh, are not free to give back to the application. So some design goals. And we'll, the main point is what we'll see is, is that since the API is simple, you have a lot of uh, degrees of freedom, you can uh, choose a lot of different approaches. Uh, we do strict internal consistency checking because we maintain metadata out of band, we can do that. Out of band meaning there's a separate piece of data structures which uh, knows how the size of the various pieces and more some, uh, some more uh, properties. Uh, randomizations in many places, not only when asking a page from the kernel, we get a random address, but also if we allocate a chunk for, an, for a small sized piece, we also make sure that uh, uh, that is randomized, so you don't always get the same chunks in the same order when you're requesting uh, uh, memory, and but also freeing, uh, and which causes caching, Caching of those data structures is also uh, randomized. So reuse will also be randomized. We'll talk about that a uh, bit more later. Uh, so store metadata out of band. That's a design, very hard design decision. Um, spend effort in trying to uh, detect API misuse, for example, uh, double freeze, and also implement facilities to not only detect API misuse, but also misuse of the data itself. And typical examples are an out of bounds write, which normally in C is perfectly possible. There's no guarantee by the compiler that that won't happen. But malloc can help you at least in some cases to, det to detect those. Use after free is a different or other different uh, uh, type of error, which uh, says, well, I've freed a piece of memory, but I'm still writing to it. Reading is one thing, but writing is even more uh, uh, devastating. So we try to, uh, to uh, do that. And it turns out that uh, reaching those goals is not as hard as you would imagine in the sense that they are overlapping in the sense that something which is 
enhancing security often also helps the developer in finding bugs. So look at um, in more detail uh, some of the design choices. And I'm comparing a typical malloc implementation, uh, which could be uh, glibc or ge malloc or any other malloc uh, which uh, exists uh, typically. Because of course there are specialized implementations and uh, this is also not to bash any specific uh, implementation of malloc because what I'm only trying to show is that here that you have a lot of design choices and we made different choices. Other implementations have their own approach and reach their goals in the way they would like to do that. And that has also consequences, of course. Uh, for example, the, if you look at the bottom row speed, um, there are quite a lot of malloc implementations which are very, very, very fast, and OpenBSD is not one of them. Um, it co takes time and effort and uh, to uh, do some of the checks. The randomization, for example, is certainly not free. Um, okay, so typical other mallocs say, well, I have a compact memory model, so allocations are close to each other. That helps for speed, helps also to make your data structures uh, uh, a bit more simple in a lot of cases. So we're going for the compact. OpenBSD typically really chose to have a scattered layout, so memory is uh, scattered around the address space. Uh, returning memory. There are some very fast in malloc implementations, but one of the reasons they achieve that speed is because they will never return memory to the kernel. That simplifies things a lot, not only because you do not have actually have to call the unmap call, but also because you do not have um, to decide whether you are going to do that or not, and keep track of some of the data uh, to do it. Stored metadata near allocation. Typically, uh, uh, other malloc implementations do that, and that has several that has security or bug implementations that the consequences of a bug in your application program will potentially have much bigger impact than when you do it. When the typically out of bounds write, out of bounds write does not end up uh, destroying your malloc metadata. Typically, uh, if you store your metadata close to the application data, it will get overwritten one day or uh, other, uh, other for, bu for, uh, for bug reasons. Randomization, uh, so internal consistency checks, we do a lot. Other malloc implementations do it, but not as extensive. Typically, randomization, same uh, story. Uh, we do it all over the place. Um, what I will also like to say is that we have some additional optional checks, which uh, I will address later. And um, for example, also, when something bad happens, what do you do? Uh, some malloc implementations just ignore it. Some give some feedback, but still continue. Uh, some have some bits you can tweak to, uh, uh, to uh, say what, what's going to happen uh, on, on an error. But uh, what we do is we never continue. If we see something which is inconsistent use of the API or other error, we just abort. With a message, that is. <laughs> uh, we try to explain why we abort, we, uh, because we try to help the developer in finding uh, the bug. And lastly, I think I already mentioned that is uh, speed. Oh, it takes, uh, there's no thing, uh, such thing as a free lunch. Uh, so uh, uh, we uh, pay the price and I think uh, often uh, the speed loss is not that big of a problem. Uh, in some cases it, it is not even that big. But often um, you would say that uh, our malloc is uh, speedy enough for many, many, many use cases. Uh, but I completely admit that it is not as fast as the other implementations. 
Okay, let's uh, look at some typically errors a, de a developer could uh, make and uh, what uh, our MyLock does with it. So this is a little program and it, like I say, I'm saying it has at least one bug, probably more. I don't know, I think at least I could uh, spot three bugs, but uh, let's continue. Let's try to concentrate on the specific use of malloc and the not only the use of malloc itself, but also the use of the memory returned by malloc. Um, I hope some of you at least uh, spot the bug. And I think that any C programmer here will probably have to admit that he made this kind of error at least once and probably more times. So we run the program and there's no indication in the output of the program that there is actually a bug. Uh, it prints a pointer failure, which will have to assume that is the right value, we, that is the, the pointer P we received and nothing else. So what I'm doing here is I am allocating a 10K, uh, uh, 10 pages of memory on a typical system of a 4K, 4K page. And this is a bit, uh, we know, at least some of us know where the bug is, <laughs> I hope, but no, no indication that actually any memory correction occurred. Well, let's try it on uh, OpenBSD, because the other one, other system was not OpenBSD. I'll uh, explain that later. And there we see a segmentation for it. This is an example of the uh, scattered memory layout, where you have 10 pages somewhere in memory, Memory is very big, uh, uh, gigabytes, gigabytes of, of physical memory, but your virtual memory uh, space is much, 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 much bigger. The chances that this allocation is next to a mapped page is virtually zero. So what we are acting, accessing here in the P, uh, in the assignment uh, the of the in the middle of the program is an out of bound write. Uh, because we should have written e SZ minus one. Of course, this is not a bug detected by Malloc itself, so uh, literally speaking, but it is detected because we say, well, we prefer a memory layout that is scattered around a virtual uh, memory uh, space, which enables us to let the kernel do its job of catching out of bound writes. So the first system is a free BSD system, which is GE malloc. By the way, a, uh, Debian using glibc has exactly the same uh, 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 behavior. And uh, so what I explained is um, what free BSD is doing in by default is extending the memory uh, in a contiguous way. So your Typically, your allocations are close to each other, are contiguous, so the overwrite would have probably ended up in some other allocation. Uh, finding that type of bug without tooling is pretty hard so often, because there's a little corruption in some other piece of memory related to that assignment, uh, and uh, well, it might take some time to actually find that issue. So let's, that was a big allocation, so a page, uh, 10 page uh, sized allocation. For smaller allocations, things are a bit different, of course, but because even on OpenBSD, small allocations share a single page. That has the consequence that a out of bound write for a small allocation typically will end up in another small allocation, having a, let's say, a smaller example of the same problem we discussed in the first example. So uh, what we would expect is that also on OpenBSD that, tip that type of bug will not be caught immediately. Uh, there are uh, maybe a few cases where you say, well, if you have the end, if the if a small allocation is the last one on that page and your out of bound rights reaches beyond that page, then you end up 
with a uh, segmentation fault. So, but typically that will not be the case. Um, sorry, yeah. I had one thing. I oh, yeah, that is correct. Yeah. So the 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 the, the we look at the. Uh, uh first at the free BSMD system. So the, the other way around, uh, uh, and, uh, that's the same uh, way around as we did uh, with the first example. No problem. You see uh, the last command line. Uh, we uh, try to allocate a uh, thousand bytes and we get no indication of any problem at all. On the OpenBSD system, it's the same. The first command line with the M, uh, execution of M, is the old one with the 10K page. The second one, the last one, is the 1,000 bytes allocation. So this is, well, what I kind of predicted. Uh, the override ends up uh, in a mapped piece of memory, so no, uh, no um, segmentation violation. But obviously we do have some means to actually detect this bug. And that is a flag which is called C from Canary. I'll explain a bit more about that later, which uh, enables the application programmer to detect this bug with the help of malloc. How does that work? The allocation actually which is done by, by malloc is bigger than what the application asks for. And we use that to uh, write some patterns of bytes into that allocation, or beyond that allocation, which are will I will show uh, later. If we look at the Debian system, there's also no indication of a problem, so there's the same issue. There is a thing, an environment variable called malloc chat check, which you can set. But it, if you read the manual page, then <laughs> it means that it does not actually implement more checks. It just carries the, the information printed when it detects a problem. So that's a bit of a bummer. Uh, you have no way of, uh, at least not with the base system, uh, to de detect the, this bug on uh, Debian as well. So the canary check that OpenBSD is doing is... Uh, um, making use of the, of the fact that the allocation is actually ending up in a ch chunk of 1024 bytes, in this case uh, 1k allocation. So the last 24 bytes are what I call malloc owned but not application owned. The application only owns 1000 byte, bytes, so the extra bytes are on allocation filled with a pattern by malloc and when, mal uh, when the allocation is freed malloc will check if those bytes are not overwritten, if they still have the same value uh, as originally written. This uh, is an optional check because it does take some performance away but it's very handy when developing or bug hunting to enable it. Uh, it is runtime always available, so even you can enable it on any uh, system. You don't have to compile any special version of malloc, but it is just runtime, uh, uh, a runtime decision to enable it or not. Um, okay, let's uh, take a look at another ty typical uh, uh, heap management problem, that is double free. So here we have a, a, a different program which uh, also has uh, a few bugs, but uh, let's concentrate on the memory management bug, um, which is a bit strange because it's not actually a bug if you look at the malloc API because what I'm freeing is something which was previously allocated. 
and there was no extra fee in be between. Still, it's a, it's a problem. Potentially. Not with the heap management itself, but the way those uh, pointers could be used in the rest of your program. There's no rest of program here, but you can imagine that what's happening here is that uh, if I pass Q to some other piece of the program that actually is feed memory, but, well, it depends much on the other code, what the other code is doing with it, if you actually see the bug or see the problem. So what's happening here is I, the second call to malloc returns the exact same pointer that was feed before, and uh, so a typically, even if you are closely reading the what's happening to the pointers, you don't see a bug. When you look at OpenBSD, there are there is a case where this uh, at least uh, with randomization that it runs fine, this code. But in some cases, it will catch it as a double free. Why is that? Uh, first, the randomization is, is that the, there is no guaranteed reuse, because if you ask a piece of, uh, uh, get an allocation, another one, and you free that, the, the next call to the same sized allocation will might return the same pointer, but it, in most cases it will return a different pointer. There's also another mechanism in the OpenBSD malloc, which is the delayed free list. That the delayed free list is good for security, because it uh, um, avoids some aliasing problems. We were using pointer for a different purpose while it was actually freed. Um, it also helps you detecting these uh, double free bugs, because the moment a free is called, um, the, the OpenBSD stashes that pointer into a little queue, picks some other pointer from that queue, actually frees that pointer, and next time free is called, the first pointer might be chosen, or some other pointer in that queue. So the order of random uh, freeze, which is actually done, has is varying. And any pointer which was freed recently and freed again will be spotted. That um, check actually is also uh, done on a sample basis. Uh, you can force it to check all slots in the free list by specifying an, an malloc option again. Um, so reusing allocations is uh, vital for performance re reasons. Think about the very simple malloc implementation I uh, sketched, which never, <laughs> uh, which uh, always uh, allocates new memory. Um, what I'm saying is immediately always doing that uh, reuse is potentially dangerous and it also does not allow you to catch double freeze in a short period of time within a short period of time. Uh, if you look at uh, some recent bugs in various software, then reuse of uh, pointers does can lead indeed to nasty bugs. Filling a buffer with, let's say, secret data, freeing it, by, by, but, but still having some pointer aliasing problem and passing that pointer to the other piece of software which can handle that, that exact same piece of software which contains secrets, well, not very nice. Um, so not re reusing allocations helps in finding double free bugs, but also with ge security in general. Um, so that is a fixed thing in the OpenBSD malloc, and 
Um, for page size allocations, uh, we also have a cache of page, uh, of larger allocations, of page size or larger, uh, and um, their reuse is done, but also randomized. The cache maintenance is randomized. If your cache is full, we randomly pick uh, regions to give back to the uh, OS, so to speak, and also the when we need pages, we pick a random uh, one from the cache if the cache is uh, not uh, empty. Um, the delayed free list has a drawback in the sense that errors reported uh, by it uh, tell you about maybe some other piece of memory than you are actually freeing at that point in time. So you call a free on memory allocation X and get complaints about allocation Y. That can be a bit <laughs> confusing, um, but I think it's worth pay to pay the price. Um, and the last thing I like to discuss is leak detection. Um, since we have a separate data structure that keeps track of allocations, that and that those metadata is not, let's say, part of the uh, allocations given to the uh, uh, to the application. We also can use that to uh, list memory leaks after a program has been run. Uh, for Mallox implementations that do not use that, that use inline uh, metadata, that's quite a bit. It's a bit harder because. Well, in some cases, Malloc doesn't even know what it allocated unless you pass, pass it a pointer back to free. <laughs> so uh, uh, that Malloc leak detection has been available, at least in some form, for a very long time, but it was never much used it bec for several reasons. Um, so the original solution was not compiled in by default because it was, well, no, not, not really nice yet. I was not very happy about it, actually. Um, but what it did is when you specified malloc, malloc option B, at the end of the program, it would dump uh, leak information and a lot of other extra information, which was, is not very interesting for the general developer. Um, but you would need to create a file for it in, a, in the current working directory. The file should have been writable and but also the application has to be able to write to it but with the modern uh, things we have in uh, openbsd that's not always possible because many 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 programmers programs do not actually have the rights the pledge to be able to write files so the old mechanism didn't work very well and was not easy to access the new solution is always compiled in so it's always available it's not active uh, when you uh, run time, but it is there. It exports data using U-Trace, and it has a small modification to K-Dump to uh, display the information in a nice way. And we have some flexibility also, not only record the immediately caller of a function, but also some uh, deeper caller that is very handy, for example, for C++ programs, which uh, Otherwise, would report all callers uh, being new, which is not uh, really <laughs> interesting. You want to know which code called new. An example, very simple program with, uh, as we can see, two leaks. Uh, you see a program run, which is specifies malloc option D and also a uh, ktrace enabled run TU minus I'm only interested in tracing the user the U trace records coming out of this and not the other things like system calls or uh, IO uh, after this K ktrace run I can do k I have a ktrace uh, ktrace out file and I can, I can use kdump the new malloc to, to uh, get the information. And what we see about the information below is uh, an F column, which has two addresses of the actual call, uh, function uh, location, uh, location uh, the uh, 
sorry, the location where the leak happened. A, sum, a total amount of bytes leaked, the number of calls that were involved in the leak, and the average size. Well, in this case, of course, since we have a uh, number of calls in both uh, rows of one, the average number is the same as the sum. And also an address to line to uh, actually print where the call happened, which is, uh, uses a different address than the fir in the first line because the address to line uh, piece will compensate for the start of the library or executable. So th this uh, shows uh, how you can actually see the location of the malloc calls that caused the leak. In line 9 and line 11, you see, well, if you start counting lines above, that ends up being the malloc call because the loop boundary is wrong in the free call, in the corresponding free call, because I cannot po point to the free call, only to the malloc call. So you have to <laughs> figure out yourself, still have to figure out yourself why that piece of memory was not free. Uh, but at least that uh, shows you uh, where the allocation happened. This is, of course, basic, simple information to detect leaks. Um, I'm not going to discuss how it, wor uh, how it actually works, because um, uh, time is running out. Hmm? Yeah, four, five minutes, okay. Um, there are in, uh, built-in calls in, in GCC and as well as in uh, the Clang uh, compilers to get the color of a function. When I um, see that, I uh, record that in one of the metadata pieces. I'm storing for, e for pages allocated uh, by malloc. And when the program finishes, I'm calling at, access, ex at exit handler, if enabled, of course, because normally we do, do not do that. I'll aggregate all norm street allocations on their F value and make a little report out of that. For chunks, the handling is a bit different because I do not want to store an extra pointer for each chunk. So I'm storing a single pointer for the allocation that ends up in slot zero. So there's a bit of, you get there a sample of leaks in effectively. And if you do not, if you have a run where you get zero F values for your particular leak, well, just try to run it again. Hope your allocation ends up into slot zero and uh, see uh, if that helps you. Now, next question is, it's, it's a basic leak detection. Why not do more? Like things like storing complete stack traces. Uh, I can't think of some other ones because you, you know, you mi might want to uh, uh, store uh, also for chunks more information. But uh, I try to find a middle ground between things that are not too complex to implement, also not too complex to review. And uh, for some solutions, even if not enabled, it would incur extra runtime uh, uh, overhead, which I do not like. So my advice would be, you could use the built-in facilities to detect there are leaks, and I have not information, not in enough information in the dump to see where the leak, ac leak actually occurs. Then I would say, well, use some other tool to do some more digging. There's a very good tool, for grind. Sadly, the port on OpenBSD is not finished yet, for a long time already, that yet. Um, but an example run on, in this case, Debian, but FreeBSD will give you the exact same information, will give you more about where the leak actually occurred. And also, if you have things like overwrite, it will also tell you where the actually overwrite happens and where the buffer, that buffer was allocated and much more information. So um, I'm hoping that the developer working on the port of Falkrind or OpenBSD will Start continue doing that and make it uh, usable in more cases. So, to summarize, we have a lot of nice options that help you uh, 
detecting bugs, de to, to detect bugs. If you have more exotic bugs, uh, you can enable uh, certain options to help you there. And I would advise that if you are developing or bug hunting, just use S because it's very thorough. It has, it will cost you some performance because it also disables the page cache. So that means that any page free will be returned to the application, but accessing that page will cause segmentation faults. Um, on OpenBSD, SSH and, uh, and SSHD actually enable S all the time. Uh, so Unmap is also really nice because it uh, uh, unmaps, actually that's not the right term, it uh, says the protection of the pages in the cache will be prop none, which is basically has the same effect as accessing a non-existent page, so you get a segmentation fault. But S will uh, enable you uh, with all the nice things. So to summarize, um, the strictness that OpenBSD Malox has does not, all, not only help you f with the secure, uh, better security, but also it helps you in finding bugs. Uh, randomization uh, is important not only for uh, security reasons, but also to fi for finding memory layout specific bugs, because each run of your program will use a different memory layout. And if you have a bug which depends on a particular memory layout, you can be uh, certain that not all your runs will have that particular memory layout, so you are able to find it. Uh, the idea is strictness is good even if it costs performance, within reasonable limits, of course. Use Malik option S while hunting for bugs or just during development. Of course, the earlier you find the bug, the better. That's uh, common knowledge. And check your program with the Malik option D for leaks. And if D does not give you enough information to find the actual leak, use some other tools to uh, uh, maybe or even on another OS, if need be, <laughs> to uh, uh, actually uh, find the root cause. And to end, uh, above is a picture of Dijkstra, uh, famous for a Dutch, uh, a Dutch uh, computer scientist, famous for various things. But he, when asked what he uh, would uh, like uh, his students to remember, is actually one thing. He, he said, well, if, a, if one of my students later on is writing a dirty hack, are using a non-rigorous approach to solve a problem, I would really like if you would think, well, if Dijkstra would be looking over my shoulder, he would not have liked that. And of course, I cannot look over everybody's shoulders, but I can use my malloc as a kind of proxy for that. So if you are uh, doing a quick hack, not doing your memory management in the proper way, my malloc will likely, at least, be that proxy and give you a bad feeling. But in the end, if it helps you finding, uh, fixing the bug or finding a better approach, I think the bad feeling is worth it. But in the so in the end, you will have a better program. Thank you. <laughs> Any questions? Yes, the question is, what is the bitmap uh, used to, to keep track of which chunks are free and which are not? Uh, is that also outside the, uh, the, 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 the data or the, uh, yeah, that's part of the metadata. I, so it's stored out, out of sight of the regular program and it has a little, f very small chance that a random write will actually hit that piece. <laughs> yeah. Mark. <laughs> Uh, 
it is the f it is sixteenths, and that is uh, implied by the minimum chunk size, uh, which is sixteen as well. So uh, uh, I when I get a page from the uh, kernel, it's always page aligned. I divided it in chunks of minimum sixteen size, so each uh, uh, chunk will have that minimum alignment. And for larger chunks, th that holds as well uh, because it's always a multiple of sixteen. That's it. Uh, thank you again. Bye. Mm -hmm.